Hey guys, Jonathan here and I am fresh back from the States. I picked up a huge amount of toolboxes, tough built, flex, Klein mod box, Husky, rigid pro draw system. It was mental. I bought loads and loads of toolboxes, shipped them back in 15 big boxes to the UK. And that video is right here if you want to go check it out. But while I was there, I didn't send all those toolboxes back empty. I went around all of the different tool stores. I didn't just go to Home Depot and Lowe's. I went to Tools and More. I went to Ace Hardware. I went to Harbor Freight. I went to a place called Delaware Secondhand Tool Exchange, which was fascinating. I also went to Walmart to look at their tools and I found some amazing tools, some really incredible stuff. And we're gonna be showing you all of my top pickups from those different places. But some things stood out more than others and they were the US made tools. I kept finding little gems in the different stores that were made right there in the US. So let me show you my top 10 tools that were made in the USA. First item on the list at number 10 is the drain weasel. I think everybody needs a drain weasel. This to me felt like a very American tool. <laughs> I saw it hanging on a rail at Ace Hardware. You don't see packaging like that in the UK. It feels pretty cool. It drew my eye and look at that. Made in the USA, patented technology. So a cool little tool for quite a common problem. There's a lot of females in my house. I've got two daughters and a wife and the drain weasel felt like the solution I needed. I need one of these things. So let's have a look at it. From the looks of things, you just attach this, put the collar on, and then you kind of go to town like winding this down the plug hole and it's got like a spiky Velcro. Put it down the plug hole, give it a swizzle around, pull all the hairs out. Now I will take that home, give it a try. Right, here we go. Here's the drain. It is pretty clean to be fair, but we'll give it a bit of a weaseling. Get the old Weasley end down there. I mean, obviously it's going straight down into a trap really, but get the old 360 spin going. Not gonna do any bits for us. Oh, hello. Flipping magic car, Morris. That's what it's like having three girls. <laughs> that is number 10. Let me show you number nine. So in number nine, we've got the Gator Grip, another piece of classic American packaging. You've got this big American made flag, which I love. It's called the Gator Grip. Now I've seen these before and I've actually got one or, well, I don't know where I've got, I think I've lost it, but I did buy one from Wish. Universal socket, one size fits all. The difference is, I think this must be a good one because it's made in America and it's got something about it in the packaging. You can see the little kind of pins are all dimpled. So I'm assuming that this thing's been made to a higher standard and a higher quality. So uh, let me cut it open and we'll have a look at it. Let's have a look, Alfred. Right, so there we go. We've got the socket out of the packet. Now it says seven mil up to 19, but the thing that I love these for is eyelets and like weird little fixings. If you're trying to put in like a hook and loop or something like that, they're really, really handy. It feels nice to be fair, I like it. Obviously it's nice chrome and it says on it, Gator Grip by Endeavor USA. I wonder if these were the original guys and then all of the different ones online are all cheap copies. Ah, here we go, so I've got the main important line. Be assured this universal socket marked Gator Grip by Endeavor USA is the original design manufactured in the USA since 1997. Love it, that is exactly what I was looking for. I didn't read that in the shop, but you could tell it had, I mean, obviously I must have noticed subliminally the uh, the original written on the top there, but we see these and they've made their way over to the UK and you can get definitely knockoff versions, but now I've got an original and it is number nine on our US made list. Next on the list is Empire Levels. Now, these aren't fully made in the US, but the most important part is, and that is the True Blue Level, or the Bubbles. So if you've ever been sent to the shop for Bubbles for Spirit Levels, you might have ended up with some True Blue Empire. <laughs> US made bubbles for spirit levels. They've got this little bit of a novelty, which I quite like. As soon as I saw this in the shop, I thought, boom, that is a bit of me. That is a novel, cool tool. Not seen that before in the UK. And it is just a quality, nicely made level. And I've not seen this brand Empire before in the UK, but I did look it up and it is quite a big brand in the States. Empire. So this one is just like your traditional torpedo level, but it does feel quality. This one though, is like your full milled aluminium body level. There's no lights in this one, but it is a thing of beauty. It's got these tried and trusted true blue bubbles, but you've also got the different angles too. So you've got your typical 90 degree, 45 degree, just a lovely little thing. And then this one is called Vary Pitch. Basically, you've got markings on the top there that show it's like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, half an inch out of level. And that would be for, you know, if you're putting in decking or you're putting in a gutter, something that has to be on a slight incline for the water to run off. Sometimes you wanna make sure that it's perfectly out of level 
all the way across evenly. So for me, I'm usually just thinking, well, you know, it's a mil to the left and then you do everything. So I've never actually had a level that has that very pitch on it. So that's a cool little thing. I like that and I like both of them. So not fully made in the US, but very interesting. Bubbles are made in the US. So that is number eight on our list, the Empire Levels. So in number seven is an item from Craftsman. Now, I looked at all the Craftsman stuff in Lowe's and there is a huge range, all quality stuff that people highly rate. Obviously it was my first time looking at tools and certainly Craftsman tools in the States and I couldn't find anything US made. Now I might have been wrong because I went to a couple of different Lowe's and they seem to have slightly different stuff. So I never saw any US made flags, but I may have missed something. So let me know in the comments if you think I've missed a Craftsman US made tool that is being made and sold right now. But I did find this. Class Craftsman Professional, you can just about see, made in the US, this is their auto-locking pliers, the Craftsman 45307. This came from the Delaware Second Hand Tool Exchange, and it was a fantastic place. If you're ever in Delaware, in Newark, which is where I was, head over to the Delaware Second Hand Tool Exchange, because the guys there were super. They were super, I mean, everyone in America I, I met was lovely, but uh, the guys at the Delaware Second Hand Tool Exchange, they were selling tools on behalf of basically people that have got family members that have died and their tools, you know, they don't want them to just rust up. So they send them to the Delaware Tool Exchange and they'll check them all, make sure they're all work in good working order. And then they sell them on behalf. So they all had QR stickers on. When you scanned it and bought it, the original vendor got the money basically. And then the tool exchange just get a commission. So fantastic way of doing it because then they're selling things for the proper value. But they had some really good, cool tools. Now I bought a load of stuff from there. This wasn't the only thing and a few of the other items were US made, but I didn't want to spoil that video, so you've got to make sure you subscribe because every single one of those toolboxes that came back from the States was full of tools and you're not going to want to miss them, so make sure you subscribe. And I would suggest you click the little bell <laughs> next to the subscribe button so then you're the first one to see. So still really great condition as well. That's number seven on the list. And there's quite a few brands that like Craftsman sent everything away and it's all being made abroad, but then they're steadily bringing it back into the States. And that leads me to number six on the list. Which is some Milwaukee made tools. Now, the screwdrivers were quite hard to find. This is a new product from Milwaukee, made in the US screwdrivers. Now these are a real step up from the classic Milwaukee screwdrivers that we have in the UK, and you do see them everywhere in the States as well. These are a nice thick kind of like dual material grip, and they've got like a knurled uh, screwdriver shaft as well. They look great in the packet, so we'll get them out and have a look at them, but we'll do that in a second, because we've also got one of their speed squares, which are commonly available in the UK, and these also are USA made. So most of the stuff from Milwaukee is still made in Asia, different countries in Asia, but there's a few items, this and this, and I do think there's maybe a couple others as well. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other US made Milwaukee tools, but they are looking to bring some of it back and have some of it made in the States. So, Fascinating to see. Fascinating. Right, so I've got one of the screwdrivers out because I wanted to kind of maintain the package. I don't want to destroy it. We might need it for another shot. So I'm liking it already. That You can tell there's a lot of uh, extra effort gone into this. This isn't like a one piece injection mold. Let me talk you through some of the things that I've spotted straight away, which I really like. So first things first, the actual steel work on this is basically well over and above normal screwdrivers. You've got knurling on the shaft and then you've got like a hex nut up here, which means if you don't know what that is you can put it in the screw you can put a spanner on it and get more torque which is great as well they've also kind of put some knurling on the teeth of the head to get more perches on screws to stop them slipping so that alone it's loads of extra effort loads of extra detail and then the handle is fascinating because nine out of ten screwdrivers are either one piece well let's say eight out of ten screwdrivers is one piece injection mold and then a couple of them are like a, a dual material, which is what I thought this was. But actually, this is three materials. You've got like a soft rubber, then a hard plastic, and then this is kind of like your classic translucent material, which I kind of love. You know, Klein have got some uh, really cool, and I think Craftsman used to have translucent, I don't know if it's Bakelite or it's like, used to be anyway Bakelite, and then it was probably just some sort of plastic. But you've got that as kind of like the core with the plastic and the rubber around the outside. You've also got like a really cool marking on the end, which just makes it easier to spot which one you need. Just a nice thing. And it's got USA on it as well. It's got USA front and back to show you it's a US made one. And that is just a legend. I mean, you can see there's the equivalent normal Milwaukee screwdriver, which 
it is two piece material. You've got red and, and these are the better ones actually. There are a, another step down from these that Milwaukee make which are just all red screwdriver handles. So this is like a dual material, rubber and red. And you have got marking on the end but it doesn't say the size of the Phillips head. And uh, this has got like a hex shaft but you can just see this one here is just another level and it's a precision tip. And on top of that, these ones are lifetime warranty. So very interesting. Really cool. I was pleased to get a set of those because the first couple of shops had them all sold out. And at the last shop I went in, they had one set of these left. So I was very pleased to get them. That is number 109876 on the list. Let's check out number five. So number five on the list is my only Snap-on tool. Now Snap-on tools are famously made in the US. They're probably one of the biggest US brands. So I had to have them on the list. This is the only tool I've had. I've had it a very long time. I don't know why I bought it. It was just to scratch the itch, I guess. It's a ratchet screwdriver. I really like it. It's part of my uh, my own personal tool set. And I don't think I'll buy any more Snap-on because uh, although I do like this item, I don't really buy into all the hype and the huge cost of it all. I think there are lots of really good equivalent brands. But one of my favorite How It's Made episodes is the Snap-on Wrench Factory, which is in America. And it is fascinating to see how they're all made, how they're made to such a good high quality. And this is no exception. This is a really good quality item. I really love it. And it's nice to have one piece of Snap-on. Like I say, this is the 95th anniversary version of their ratchet and screwdriver. They make this in all different colors. And actually, as a bit of a teaser, I think I may have to buy a little bit more Snap-on because we're trying to put together the ultimate pink toolkit to auction for breast cancer awareness. Now, pink tools are hard to find and most pink tools that are available on the market are very pants. To put it mildly, pink tools traditionally are very, very cheap and nasty. So we're trying to put together a really good pink toolkit and there's only a few items that exist that are pink. Now, I've got a few already, but I do believe I'm gonna end up with some Snap-on because a lot of the items, no one else makes them. But to see that, you've got to subscribe. So loads of good stuff to come. Make sure you click the subscribe. Number five is Snap-on. Let's look at number four. So fourth on the list is something I've had for a long time as well. These are Bondus Allen keys. Now there's two big Allen key manufacturers in the States, Bondus and Eklund. Now I've never owned any Eklund, but when I was at Tools and More in Delaware, I picked up a set of these and I got a set of T-handles as well for that video. So that'll be coming in the future. So we can have a look at the Eklund ones, which are made in the US. And I already had a really high opinion of the Bondus. Now these are like, really heavy T-handles and I love them because they're like a bit of a flywheel. They're great to get started to just crack, well usually to be fair you'd crack a screw with one of these. You wouldn't risk a ball end on it because you will shear off. But to be fair these do take a bit, you can get a lot of purchase on these and I have, you know, probably shouldn't have done but I have released certain cap heads with these. The thing I love about them is they've got like a flywheel effect. You spin it and it just goes. It's really nicely balanced, quite satisfying, really nicely made. The grips are cool. And you've got like yellow for Imperial, red for metric. This is how I've had them for years. I'll put in a little clip of me cutting this on the channel. And at the time I matched it up with Weha. Still don't know how you say it, some of these brands, but Weha do a metric in red Allen key set and they do Imperial in yellow. So it felt like they matched the color coding. And then the green, if you're interested, is Torx. And then that is Torx as well, but they're security Torx. So they have a little, uh, a little dot in the end of them. So that is my existing Allen key drawer, which uh, I'm quite proud of. I love it. I feel like getting all of these lines done nice and square is not as easy as it may look. So I'm happy with that. Let's open these Eklund and have a look if these are comparable. It's a pity that the metric ones are blue and the Imperial are red because obviously that is going to mess up my colour coding. But I think what I'll end up doing is putting these in a separate toolkit. We need to split them up. I do think you can get Eklund in the RS catalogue. I'm pretty sure I've seen a few guys on site that use Eklund screwdrivers when I've been in different factories. But you can see they've got USA made on them. They feel pretty decent. Let me know, have you guys used Eklund Allen keys or Bondus Allen keys? Which one would be your favorite? They're all made in the USA though, and that's why they are my number four. Let's check out number three. So in third position is this, an S-Wing pry bar. Now, I already had some S-Wing pry bars and I checked them. Let me get them out. 
Here they are. I've had these for probably about four years and I do like them. They're nice. You've got this grip on and you know what? They're very similar to the Milwaukee pry bar, which is here. You can see they've got a similar vibe to them. Well, these are S-Wing, patent pending. They're not American made. These are made in Taiwan. But this one, which I, I love, I think this is a great quality item, is made in the USA. And the reason why I think it's quality is look at the finish on it. It's got this really nice gloss finish and then it's got like a machine edge pry on it. It's also got this nail remover as well. So cool little thing made in the US. So, you know, some brands are entirely made in the US. So something like the old Drain Weasel. And then obviously we've got Milwaukee that is kind of split in they've just got one or two items back but the shop that I got this from was Tools and More and they had loads of S-Wing hammers loads of S-Wing pry bars and crowbars and most of them in their store were US made so from what I could tell the majority of S-Wing stuff is made in the US great little thing that is number three Now, for number two on the list, some of these items, you can see they're brand new. I bought them from my big trip to America last week. Some of them, like the snap-on screwdriver, are tools that I've had for a long, long time. And this, in the number two slot, is a tool I've had for a long time and loved. Now, these are made in the US by Proto, and they are reversible circlet pliers. They come in a set of four. I got these from the RS catalog a long, long time ago, and I love them. They replaced all my other circlet pliers, and I'll show you. Essentially, you've got two pairs that are like right angle, and then you've got two pairs that are straight on. That's all I've ever needed. You can get the larger sizes for really large circlips if you're doing that. But these are all perfect for me for machine stuff. Now this is the beauty. So you've got, the, right now these are set in like the compact mode. That's the normal mode there. That is for external circlips. Stretch them out open. You've got an internal circlip. You just press that, flip it over. And now you've got for internal circlip. So one pair of circlip pliers is doing two sizes with fixed jaws. They're really strong. I've never had any trouble with them. And I like the fact that if you squeeze them together like this and then and then flip it over, it's neither internal or external at this point. It's just compact, it takes up less room. So that is my number two US made tool by Proto. I think Proto is owned by Stanley Black & Decker, but they were their own brand and they're still made in the USA from what I can see online. So there you go, the Proto reversible circlet pliers made in the US, take the second spot. Let's have a look at number one. So that all brings us to the number one spot. What is my favorite USA made tool that I've got or that I bought in the US last week? Well, I think this is a pretty good choice. This is channel lock. I've never owned a pair of channel locks, but I know of them, I see them. They're quite iconic with their blue handles. And these guys truly were the original. Made in the US, obviously. That's why they are our top pick. These things have been around since 1886. That's 138 years of legacy and heritage. These guys invented this style of grip. There's loads of versions of these now. Obviously, Knipex have loads of different Cobra types, but channel locks were the original. They're regularly found in different toolboxes, and now I have a pair, or at least two pairs. So they're the classic, but they're not the thing that made it top pick for me. They are really, really exciting but it is their US made circlet pliers, which I never thought I'd replace my Proto circlet pliers because I do love these. I've had them for a good few years now and I've always rated them. But then while I was in America, I found these. Now these are the channel lock circlet pliers. Well, you call them retaining rings over in the US. We call them circlips. So actually I'm glad that it says that. For any US viewers, now you know what I'm on about. These things are also retaining ring pliers. We call them circlips. They're lifetime warranty. Both of them, all the channel lock stuff's lifetime warranty. So what's special about these? Well, let me show you. I'm all about having a compact toolkit having as much versatility as possible without needing a full roll cab like this. The more tools and the more problems you can solve with a small toolkit, the more likely you're to have that toolkit on you. And that's why I like these, look. So one pair of pliers, this is external, the external circlip retaining ring mode. You flip it over, it's got a really nifty little mechanism. It like clicks into place. And now with one click, you've got it external and internal. And you might be wondering, well, what about the different tips? Well, you get five tips. You've got some bent ones, you've got long ones, you've got thin ones, narrow ones. You end up with five tips to go in this and the little Allen key. So as long as you keep these two together, this one item, US made and a good quality sturdy item, these are really chunky steel on the end, is replacing all four of those. And those replace some people have a, have a circlip drawer, a full drawer full of all different sizes of circuit pliers. Before I had those, I had like internal and external sets. You had a minimum of like eight to 10 circlip retaining ring pliers. I replaced all of that with those four and was really pleased about it. But now I can replace those four with this one. And that is why it's my number one pick for US made tools. So there we go. That is all of my top 10 US made tools. The ones I already had, the ones I picked up, 
There's a few personal favorites in there that I already had, Snap-on, Bondus, the Protos, but I've learned a lot on my US trip and there's definitely some tools out there that we could benefit from in the UK. And that hasn't even mentioned the Brucey bonus. You won another Brucey bonus. And this is a heck of a bonus. It's not made in the US, but it's not available in the UK. I don't know if it's available anywhere else in the world other than the States. It's a very American tool. And what tool is that? Well, it's from a place called Cabela's. Now I recognize this logo, Bay Shop Pro or Bay, Br Bay, Bay Pro Shops. I feel like it was on Forrest Gump's hat, but I'll have to go away and check that, but I'm pretty sure it was. Now, what did I get from there? Well, actually, firstly, let me tell you about Cabela's. This is a massive outdoor shop. It looked, I, I, when I was driving past in America, I thought it was some sort of like restaurant. It looked set up like some sort of massive country lodge and the scale of it, just walking in, how expansive it was. They must've had about 15 aisles of fishing gear. They had a full on aquarium inside the store. They had like all sorts of taxidermy deer and mooses and other animals all up on shelves high up. It was flipping crazy. And then obviously I, went, I had to go over to the hunting section, crossbows, bow and arrows, guns of all shapes and sizes, stuff for the kids. <laughs> It was a pretty mental store, to be honest. And they had this thing. Now, not much of the stuff in that store would I be able to buy and bring back to the UK, but I did check and this thing was allowed. Now, you may have seen these bug assault rifles and basically they fire little small pockets of salt to kind of shoot like flies out the sky if they're in your house. Well, this is the next level up. This is called the Shredder and it is basically a bug blaster. They've designed it for shooting bigger bugs. Exactly, bigger bugs. So I felt like this was a pretty safe bet for the UK because nobody's gonna confuse it with a real weapon and get scared. A lot of items they've got over there, even novelty, they look a little bit too real and a little bit too serious. I felt like that was the happy medium. I don't think anyone's gonna get too scared if you walk out in the street with this thing, but it is a weapon. I'll tell you, it's very, <laughs> it's very heavy. <laughs> Did that hit you? Hit me too. Good job we got safety glasses on. <laughs> so it's a pretty beasty thing. A nice heavy old chunk. How does it work? Well, it has these air canisters. Don't know if you've ever seen these little CO2 canisters. They go in the trigger and you get these little uh, revolver cartridges. So we've got a couple of those. So we'll have to go out and give it a test. I don't think we'll shoot um, live bugs out in the wild with it though. That wouldn't be very nice. And I don't think there's any bugs in our unit, but maybe we can shoot some targets. Knock some cans off or something. But uh, yeah, let's go and give that a test first things first. So I've come into the warehouse to test this thing out. I don't want to accidentally spray salt in anyone's eyes. So everyone stood well back. Got a couple of old cans set up as targets. Now I can tell already this thing doesn't shoot very far. So I'm about, what's this? One, two, two and a half meters out. Standard dartboard, Oculent, length, 2.7 we'll go for. I think I'll have to go a bit closer to try and knock these off. We'll go for about one and a half. probably do some damage to an earwig and that's the main thing. What a flipping beastie thing that is. I can't, I don't know who's got this in their house, like ready and waiting for like a cockroach that's coming in and you run and get the shredder. Where's he gone, you flipping swine? So it's a bit, it kind of baffles me that this is something that's commonly sold in the States. It's a beast, it's a cool idea as well, shooting salt, because obviously if you're firing a bit of salt out, you know, you're gritting the roads as well. So everyone's a winner. My thought was I do a lot of camping and we've had a few campsites now where they seem to have like an earwig problem. So as soon as you're packing up the tent or sometimes in the tent, around the ground sheet and stuff, you seeing earwigs and I flipping hate earwigs. It's like one of the worst things. So uh, that could be handy for that. But what a quirky little pickup and a bit, hell of a Brucey bonus, that one. So put that there. Now, I've got to get this lot organized. I can't just leave it all sat here. And for that, we need a toolbox. So while I was in Ace Hardware, I picked up this Beastie. This is a Milwaukee Packout Toolbox Standard. And you might notice it looks a little bit different, a little bit unusual. Well, that is because this is the US edition. And the US edition is red with black latches. And the UK edition is black with red latches. And the reason I'm led to believe is that Hilti kind of had red toolboxes protected in the UK. So when Milwaukee came to town, they couldn't have the full red toolboxes. So they had to go for black. So that's why we have two different versions. So for this video, we will use US tools in the US toolbox or our Milwaukee Packout inserts, which I have two here. They come in twin packs. They come in all different colors. This is a twin pack of 50 mil red. These fit straight in there. They're a perfect fit and they help you get all of your pack outs or whatever toolbox you've got, whatever tool case you use, whatever brand you're, you're behind. We sell inserts for your case and they just slot in there like that. And then rather than having what essentially is a plastic bucket, 
you can organize everything. You can have two layers and have a tray to lift out. And we may end up having two layers to be fair because there's quite a lot of stuff here. But let me lay it all out, then we can cut it all in and see how we go. So let's do a layout. There we go, I've got a full on layout going. So we're gonna end up with two trays, a lift out top tray, and uh, we'll probably put the shredder in the bottom. You always need a shredder in your toolkit. I think that's gonna be my new rule. Wherever I go, I've got the salt shredder. Shoot out any earwigs that come creeping out of the, uh, the machinery. So <laughs> that's my new number one tool right there. So I've got to cut all this in, and when it comes to cutting shadow foam, it's a very, very simple process. All you need is anti-cut gloves and a scalpel. And all of those things come in one of our basic cutting packs. And these come free with most orders on the website at shadowfoam.com. It's got everything in there that you're gonna need to do exactly what I'm about to do now, which is place the item on the phone where you want it to go. So let me start over here with these Allen keys. Put a little bit of pressure on it so it doesn't move. And then you literally use the scalpel with a sharp blade on it like a pencil and you just cut around the item and you're just capturing the silhouette on the foam. You're not cutting very deep. You're just basically just getting the outline. Once you've gone all the way around and you're sure that you've met back up at the start, you can then move the item out of the way and then you can go back and you can make that cut a lot deeper. Now for this item, it's about 15 mil deep. So we want to cut down past that. We want to go down about 20 mil. Once you've cut all the way around, you can then push your finger down the end and then peel back the foam. And you're basically just tucking your finger down the gap and kind of twisting the end of your finger or turning the end of your finger just to get a bit of purchase, a bit of leverage on the foam. And then you're just chasing that peel out all the way along. And you can see in one piece, boom, there it's out. Tool fits perfectly. And I'm going to do that exact same process for all of the other items. And then I'll come back to you. So let's get cutting. Right, there we go, all cut, and actually made that one the base layer instead of the uh, the shredder, because you know, when there's an earwig, you don't wanna be messing about lifting layers out. You wanna be, you wanna get straight to it, get the shredder out on hand for any earwigs about the place. So I put that on the top and actually cut a handle on the side as well. So it just means it's easier to lift out, which is quite nice. And I'll just give that a little bit of a ooh, push down. And there we go, that is uh, all of the foam cut nicely. That's a full set of American made tools, plus a bug assault shredder all in the US red pack out box. So what would your favorite US made tool be? Would you have put channel lock in the number one spot? Would you have maybe shuffle things around? Maybe you're a snap on fan and everything you've got in your toolbox is snap on. Let me know down in the comments. I read all the comments and I reply to most of them as well. So I love having a chat down there about tools. Don't miss out, head down there now. And while you're down there, click the subscribe button and we've got some big projects coming. I was around the US for a week. I went to all of those different stores, Harbor Freight, Ace Hardware, Tools and More, Walmart. Walmart, it's amazing how many tools they have. You go in Asda or Tesco's in the UK, they have one or two tools on a hook. You go in Walmart and it's flipping aisles of the stuff. So that kind of blew my mind. We also went to a couple of other cool tool shops, including the classic Home Depots and Lowe's, but I'm sure we missed out a few. And I know we found some absolutely incredible tools we don't have here in the UK. And all of those videos are to come and I'm quite excited to share them with you. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon and then you won't miss any of the future videos. You'll get a little notification when our next banger comes out. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.
Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? Subscribe.